Hello everybody, my name is Kador. Today, I'm going to be doing a music review of the latest tape by Cremation Lily titled More Songs About Drowning. Now, I know I haven't uh, done a review like this in a while, but I figured since everyone's home now during the pandemic, I have time to devote to things like this. And so, yeah, I'm just gonna, I don't know if this will be a regular thing, but I'll just talk about releases that I enjoy or interest me in some way. So, before I talk about this latest release, I feel like it's important to do a little overview of his material leading up to it, because Cremation Lily has had a very interesting stylistic progression over the years. Before he started this project, Zen Zigo, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, had a black metal project called Levy Morquette, and a dark ambient drone project called Life in the Dark. Uh, Cremation Lily as a project then started in 2011 as a sort of a power electronics noise project, featuring incredibly lo-fi walls of distortion and screams and feedback kind of buried in the mix. Uh, however, this even this early material stood out noticeably from most other power electronics projects at the time because of its use of ambient synth melodies hanging in the background of these otherwise atonal slabs of noise. This gave his early noise material a unique sense of melancholy and seemingly contradictory peacefulness, best heard on releases like Sexless Merit and Funeral Home. Moving forward, he began to strip back the noise a bit and bring the melodic synths to the forefront. This be could be considered his bubblegum industrial period, a uh, term coined by Croatian Amor, who is also making similar sounding, kind of industrial tinged, minimal ambient synth music around this time. Uh, this sound is exemplified by releases such as Lines of Golden Lights and Lovers Against the Rocks. But then from here, he ventured into more of a straight up ambient direction, mixing in some field recordings. Uh, and these field recordings were often of the ocean or other water based sources indicating Cremation Lily's shift to almost exclusively water-based themes in his work. I read in an interview that Ziggo almost drowned one time, and that experience shaped a lot of the art that he created after the fact. And as the title of this latest project reflects, in a somewhat humorous and self-aware manner, uh, he has written quite a few songs about drowning at this point. His last two full-length albums, In England Now Underwater, and The Processes and Instruments of Normal People Trying and Failing, Falling and Water Running, <laughs> Both continued in this ambient vein, but mixed in ambient techno as well, uh, leading to some of the best albums I've heard in that genre. The tape-saturated noise and field recordings that are subtly worked into these dreamy, warm beats and soundscapes are just lovely, and it's a particular combination of styles that I really haven't heard anywhere else. However, nothing could have prepared me for the stylistic amalgamation that he would begin to venture into after these albums. This new style was first seen on a couple of individually released songs that were collaborations with the artist Doves, who is a member of the goth boy clique spearheaded by the late Lil Peep. Doves is a pretty similar artist to Peep and the other goth boy clique members, doing a sort of fusion of emo singing with atmospheric trap beats. So naturally these collaborative songs combine this already interesting genre fusion with Cremation Lily's trademark cassette tape field recordings and dense soundscapes. I really did not expect Cremation Lily to incorporate emo trap into his sound at the time these songs were released, but honestly it worked really well here, and it made me very curious as to where he was going to go next with this sound. Which brings us to more songs about drowning, his latest release. The first thing I noticed when browsing the liner notes to these tracks is that not only is Doves featured on another song, but so is Wicked Fade Springs Eternal, who is one of the most popular goth boy click members and one of the bigger names in emo trap in general. Also featured is Jeff Rickley from the classic post-hardcore emo band Thursday. So this gave me the initial impression that Cremation Lily would be doubling down on the emo influence for this tape, and while that is partially true, there's a whole lot more going on here than I expected. When you look even further into the liner notes, you see that a bunch of noise and experimental artists, namely Moss Harvest, False Moniker, Plague Mother, Billy Gumberg, and Daniel Mothers, have all contributed source sounds to this release. So with this in mind, more songs about drowning was shaping up to be a wholesale fusion of noise and emo music, and being a big fan of both of these genres, I was massively excited to see what this tape had to offer. It turns out that every track on songs, more songs about drowning takes on more or less its own style, so Let's go through it track by track before talking about the release as a whole. The instant you click play on the first track, Don't Drown, you're hit with screeching feedback and distortion. This gutsy opening is sure to scare away any casual emo rap fans right off the bat, which is certainly respectable. Suddenly we hear a female voice say, Cremation, and the song quickly progresses into a very pretty but still noisy ambient synth passage, 
before progressing once more into a sort of acoustic guitar and vocals passage soaked in reverb. It all sounds very melancholic, and that emotion is just about the only consistent thing throughout this tape. In three short minutes, this track shifts between what sounds like three totally different songs, giving you a taste of the eclecticism more songs about drowning has to offer. The next song, Water Dries on Our Skin, contains the Wiccaphase Springs Eternal feature. And it's one of the more straightforward emo trap songs on here, and won't be too alienating to fans of Wiccaphase and similar artists. But still, the production is much more dense and fuzzy than is typical for this style. The last bit of the track briefly, briefly blink, brings in a uh, four on the floor ambient techno kick, so which you know kind of calls back to his last couple albums. And but yeah, overall, this is a great song. I just wish it was longer. Uh, I should also mention that we hear the aforementioned female voice saying cremation lily uh, again at the beginning of this song, and it starts to become apparent that literally every song on this tape throws in that sample at, at some point. Um, I, I see it as sort of a playful mockery of trap producers who just overuse their DJ tags, uh, as it's pretty funny to hear that sort of thing right next to like a noisy and abstract ambient drone piece, as we hear later on. But still, the joke begins to wear a bit thin as the tape goes on. The next track, Sinking Alright, is the new one with Doves, and it starts out with a sort of down-tempo electronic beat backed with Ziggo's trademark distorted tape noise and synths. And both artists trade off vocal duties here, as in the last track, except this time we hear some screaming buried behind the singing. And about halfway through, this song's structure dissolves into an ambient drone washed with waves of distortion, and it starts to become abundantly clear that this tape is not out to deliver a set of coherent, catchy songs, but rather just kind of meanders about in an unpredictable fashion. The next track is a very short interlude piece called An Outline of How We Might Feel. Uh, there's not much to say here, it's more or less an extension of the noisy drone that ended the previous track. Uh, but after that we have Evening is Cast Astray, which starts with the type of reverb-soaked acoustic guitar and singing style that was hinted at in the first track. And the song is so distorted that it's impossible to discern any of the lyrics uh, without reading them on Bandcamp. But this first part of the track actually reminds me quite a bit of Have a Nice Life, which is one of my favorite bands. But uh, this song definitely doesn't reach the heights of that band's best material. And uh, around the halfway point, an ambient drone kind of overtakes the guitar and vocals before a techno pulse comes in. But this beat lasts less than a minute, so it makes this feel like a sort of unfinished and unfocused addition. At this point, I start to realize the main flaw that pervades more songs about drowning. There are just too many ideas shoved into too short a span of time, such that most of the material here just sounds like abstract, unfinished sketches rather than focused, completed songs. There's nothing wrong with working in an abstract structure and blending multiple genres together, but you have to know where to insert different elements and how long to make them last and many songs in this release are just frustratingly unsatisfying because they present these awesome ideas that just suddenly disappear in the blink of an eye. The last song in the album is called Light Gathers in the Corners of the Room, and it is split into two distinct parts. Part 1 features Jeff Rickley of Thursday, and he delivers a solid vocal performance here next to Ziggo's. And the production is perhaps the most clearly trap-influenced on the whole tape, but still blends in plenty of strange noisy elements and heavy atmospherics to keep it far removed from your average SoundCloud beat. Uh, this song is probably the greatest standout on the tape, aside from Water Dries on Our Skin. But the second part of this track is an 8-minute ambient piece, characterized by a sort of minimalist piano melody uh, infused with field recordings and the kind of general haze of reverb and distortion that we hear throughout more songs about drowning. This is the only song on the tape that I can say lets its single idea last for a long enough time, and ironically it lasts even a bit too long without much variation from my liking. But still, I'd rather the other material last as long as this track does than the one to two minute durations of most of these ideas. Before wrapping things up with my overall thoughts, I might as well mention the lyrics on this tape. Uh, most of them are pretty unintelligible due to the heavy processing and distortion applied to them, but you can read them on the release's Bandcamp page and they're pretty much what you'd expect them to be, uh, a fusion of typical emo themes of self-hatred and depression mixed with imagery of water, the ocean, and of course drowning. Uh, I'd say they're not bad, but they don't exactly add much to these songs either. Uh, the focus is clearly on the sound play and the emotional atmosphere, rather than the lyrics anyway. So overall, this is an incredibly interesting and unique release that blends together elements of noise, ambient, tape music, emo, trap, and tons of other genres in a way that really no one else is doing right now. I have to give it props just for this daring and unlikely combination of influences, but is it an excellent release? No, definitely not. 
I think there are plenty of great moments on this thing, but they simply do not last long enough to feel gratifying, and it ends up sounding like a random collage of various cool ideas that are just not explored and refined to the level that they should be. I think this tape shows an incredible amount of potential for a whole new style of music, bridging the worlds of noise and cassette tape ambient music with the world of SoundCloud, emo trap, and cloud rap, but ultimately more songs about drowning does not deliver the kind of focused songwriting that can turn this style into something truly great. But if nothing else, this tape should get you excited for whatever Commission Lily comes up with next, because I seriously believe that he has the ability to make a truly incredible album in a brand new style of music. So, if I had to give more songs about drowning a rating, I'd give it a 7 out of 10. But, uh, yeah. That's it for this video. Um, let me know if you've listened to this album, what you think of it. Or tape, or release, I don't really know what to refer to it as, EP. But, uh, yeah, uh, those are my thoughts. And thanks for watching, and I might do more of these if I feel like it. If I don't, then I won't. But, yeah, hope you're having a good time, and, uh, stay safe, everybody.